place of yes. yeah. It's so <laughs> So today? Okay. Well, it's I was on the ship. I still woke up at my normal 6.15, oh, but I never I knew, you know, I had yeah. to say, okay, what time is it really? But today, you know, it was 7.15 because the time <laughs> change here, <laughs> you know? <laughs> What was the biggest time change? Was there? Oh, it was just Panama. A, is it a couple of hours? It was just or? a. We'd go an hour, and then an hour. Okay, so, so we okay. Were two hours off. Okay. Total, and then gradually came back to the same hour. Yeah, and now we're in regular time. When we came back from Rome, when we came across the Atlantic. It oh, was, that's always tougher. Yeah. I mean, that well, it, it was easy because you were on the ship, and it was gradual. Oh, <laughs> right. Not right. on the airplane. Not an airplane is too <coughs> used immediate. Yeah. yeah. I actually had a friend who. Uh, I had a sabbatical one year. I was in. I lived in Australia for six months, mm. Mm. and a friend came to visit. She said she literally slept for two whole days because it was such a. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like a fourteen-hour time change. Just you know, mentally, you come back on a plane. You're yeah. like, same thing with me. When I eventually came back after having been there for six months, mm. the first maybe month and a half, I just could not get to sleep. It was just like, oh my god, it was really hard to tr retrain your body. Brutal. Yeah, because you. <coughs> Body acclimates pretty quickly, but then it's like, what do you mean we're changing back? I've just been doing this for six months. What are you doing? So, yeah, it was tough. But the flight there is brutal. We're, uh, we're going to Australia <coughs> in October. Oh, we're nice. Gonna, we're taking a cruise from LA all the way oh, to Hawaii. Wow. We'll be back. How long does that take? We'll, we'll be gone a month. Uh, but we're going to stay a, a week in Sydney once we get there. Yeah, Sydney's a beautiful, that's where I was, based out of. I saw a lot of the country. It's like anything. It's a, it's a, it's bigger than the U.S., so you can't see the whole no. thing. But I did see quite a bit while I was there. It's a beautiful country. Beautiful, beautiful country. Sydney's a fantastic city. I mean, it's a major city. When I, I, I was there in, originally in 19, I'm trying to think now, 98 to 99, and then my husband and I went <laughs> for work. So I said, I'll go with you. So we went, this is probably, I don't know, two or three years ago now. I think it's 95. And I'll be honest with you, it changed, it changed a lot. Uh -huh. This is it's a like little off. Said. Okay. It was always the same, but it's had to my phone. Built up. But it is a beautiful city. And the harbor and the, the harbor bridge. And, oh, it'll be a great. Now, how long will it take from Hawaii to Australia? Well, that seems like that's the long part of it. Well, we'll go, okay, the ship takes from LA, Hawaii, go to Bora Bora. Going to order, Historic Preservation Advisory Board for March 23rd, 2023. Diane, may we have a roll call, please? Lucille Ponte? Here. David Perry? Here. Jacqueline Pashko? Here. Cass, uh, Casey Nam Nemec? Beth Magnan? Here. Brad Gamblin? Here. Valerie Colbert? Thank you. Uh, remember to silent. Oh, remember to silence your cell phones. Uh, don't be like me, which I forgot last time until it reminded <laughs> me with a beep. Oh well. Anyhow, uh, again, welcome everyone. That's a record crowd today, <laughs> of the right size, I guess. Uh, proceeding any. Let's uh, do the, we did the roll call, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I don't have any announcements. Do any of our board members and staff have any announcements? Um, just a reminder, obviously, to keep your, uh, make sure the microphones are green when you're talking. And also wanted to mention that the minutes are not available at this, well, they are done, but they are not able to be generated right now. We're having technical issues with the program. So hopefully uh, next month we'll have both sets of minutes available, so. Well, thank you. Thank you. And uh, the next meeting will be April 27th.
to get here quickly, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, do I have any public comments? Anyone wishing to address the Historic Preservation Advisory Board on any subject may do so at the appropriate time during the meeting, which all likelihood is now. Those who choose to speak must state their name for the record. Each person will be allowed to speak for a maximum of three minutes. Uh, quiet ending, all right. No public comments. Uh, we can't approve the minutes because we don't have the minutes to approve at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, they are in process. And that brings us to CA-09-2023-310 Gill Street. Action required, B01-2023, a request by Michael P. Hyman's authorized agent for Bright Space and Time LLC property owner pursuant to Chapter 26, Section 16.10 <coughs> Punta Gorda Code to, to construct a new pool deck and screen enclosure with a 12.38 rear yard setback at the closest points instead of the 15 foot year rear yard setback as required by chapter 26, section 3.7, parentheses G, parentheses 4, Pontagoda Cord Code, at an existing single family residence structure constructed in 1950 addressed as 310 Gill Street, Pontagoda, Florida, uh, a legal, uh, legal description is available here, or will be repeated. And uh, at that point, staff comments? Okay, so you hit, oh, Brittany Metzler for the record, planner in urban design. And you all have to vote on this variance today for approval. And staff has recommended denial of this certificate of appropriateness because it does not meet the literal criteria for variance uh, applications. Okay. Do I have any further comments? Um, and I'd like to know um, what staff's Objection R, please, if you could state. Oh, okay, Mitchell. Uh, so for the record, Mitchell Austin, Urban Design, the, uh, the variance application is for uh, pool, pool deck, and uh, screen enclosure at this property uh, from varying from the required 15-foot rear yard setback. Um, there's no unusual condition or circumstance, so this, uh, this, per, uh, per, this pool deck <laughs> and enclosure, the structure, proposed structure does not meet the literal criteria for a variance, which requires some uh, site condition or, or other uh, special circumstance to uh, merit this. Um, under the historic provisions of the code, there, there are also uh, references to the variance process and that if uh, a variance, um, you know, positively impacts uh, the preservation of a, of a historic structure, that could be considered. However, in this case, the proposed pool is to the rear of the property and obviously staff is not the property owner but from our perspective the pool can, could appears to be able to be reconfigured so that it would be conforming to the code so that is why we've recommended denial it's purely from a technical perspective uh, from a historic preservation perspective this is a pool proposed pool and screen enclosure that will not be viewable from the street it has no visual impact on the structure so there's no either way and that is why the denial is recommended uh, on the certificate of appropriateness because the variance should be denied based on the the criteria in the code the technical criteria in the code any questions that's why Yes, sir. Uh, I'm the 
I was just preparing to be ready when you were ready for me to make a presentation. Right. Do you have anything else? Uh, no, staff is done. Thank you. Yes, sir, and your name, please. My name is Michael Hamans, and I represent uh, Ms. Timms, who is the principal of the LLC that owns this property. She probably made a mistake when she put it into the LLC because she's asking me to put it into her name so she can make an application for her homestead. So, uh, so please uh, don't take offense to it being a, an entity rather than a person. This is a real person that uh, has a need here. Uh, the pool's not really the problem. Uh, the, the pool meets the setbacks. There's some decking that, uh, that, uh, that uh, adds to it and, and uh, does need the variance. And the, uh, the, the pool screen structure needs the variance. And you might imagine that I disagree with staff's conclusions about whether or not this variance is, uh, is appropriate. Uh, I don't think that that's really what you're here to decide, whether there's a variance that could or could not be approved by the city council. Uh, you're here to look at it for historic preservation purposes and historic uh, appropriateness. And, uh, and as Mr. Austin has already indicated to you, it really doesn't have any uh, negative impact upon the historic and visual aspects of the property. Uh, it has, it really has to do with uh, <clears throat> the structure. If you look at the, at the screen and you can see the building with the chair in front of it and the two windows there, that, that was initially built as an agrage, as a, uh, an accessory structure years and years ago. And it's appropriate and approved. And, uh, and it is closer than the 15 feet. It's at it at the 12 something feet uh, as, as far as setback from the rear. So we have a major portion of the structure that, that was initially built as a garage and now is a breezeway to it, uh, same roof line with the rest of the house and is, uh, and is a bedroom. And so it's now part of their housing structure rather than a, a place to park a car. Uh, and so that structure in and of itself is already closer than what we're going to be asking for the uh, for the screen the screen enclosure and the deck to be. So uh, the uh, this is a this uh, you can see on the on the uh, screen now that that uh, that roof structure and how it ties together and the uh, and the garage and how it goes to the rear uh, uh, back there it. It shows almost to the property line. That property line, green line on there is incorrect because there's a vacated alley that's between the structure to the uh, furthest to the top and the subject property. And so that, so that line is a little bit further out than what that green line and the yellow shading indicate. The, uh, when you look uh, at it, the, the special circumstances is and if you can go back to that other uh, shot for me. To meet the setback requirement at 15 feet, the cage uh, structure would hit that window, the furthest on your left when you're looking to it. And what we're really wanting to do is we want the cage structure to, uh, to, be c to conform to the, uh, to the, uh, the, the wall, the, the structure itself, and that would leave so that those uh, windows would be within the uh, the screen structure as opposed to be cutting it off in the middle there someplace or right on the uh, the window. One of these days they may want to put an access from that bedroom out uh, into the, uh, the screened uh, pool area. And so having that screen structure there fits a functional portion of this. Uh, it, and so this next picture over here, and I took these pictures uh, myself. The, uh, this next uh, is with my back to the wall right there where the screen uh, structure would be. That's looking due north uh, out on this property. And so that's basically the line that you would uh, uh, 
see. And so there's grass and other uh, uh, part that's before the fence. And so all of this is well inside the existing fence and the property lines another three to four feet outside of that. Uh, and so it, it, we're not really encroaching in on the neighbor. Uh, and as a matter of fact, the structure that you see in the background there is the house that's on, uh, on Olympia, on West Olympia. And, uh, and its massing is such that that if you're going to look at it for historical uh, things, you, you look at how does it fit within the visual aspects of the community and, and massing is one of the things that you look at. And so it's significantly smaller than the existing massing that uh, in, in its adjoining uh, properties. The, uh, the, the other property has a pool that, uh, that would, uh, that uh, it, they just don't have the screen structure there. So we're looking just to have a pool similar to our next door neighbor, but with a screen structure. Well, why do we want a screen structure? Uh, I have a client, there's a special circumstance in variances that says if you've got some kind of disability or other kind of condition, uh, health condition, that, you're, that that can serve as a basis for granting of a variance. So, our position, in our opinion, uh, our, I, it's as if I have a mouse in my pocket, uh, my client and my position is that, the, uh, is that the special circumstances, the configuration of the existing buildings on the property uh, that we're just trying to conform to uh, and in what makes architectural and functional sense. And the reason that she needs the pool cage is because she and her daughter have autoimmune deficiencies and so they have, uh, they, uh, they have uh, a need not to be exposed to mosquito bites and to, uh, to bugs, and so they want to keep them out with their screen enclosure. And they also have some sun sensitivity that if they're out in the direct sun is a problem, and the, uh, and the screen enclosure and the screen provides some uh, protection uh, from, uh, from the sun. And, uh, and so, we think that we're going to be successful with the city council in obtaining the variance. And, and so contrary to Mr. Austin's uh, representation that it doesn't meet it, I ass ass uh, assert to you that it does meet the conditions for the variance. So what's your job here today? I hope that your job is to say, well, assuming that the variance is granted, would the resulting structure meet the historic uh, uh, criteria and the answer you already know the answer it doesn't have any impact you're not going to be really able to see it from the road the only p opportunity to see it from the road is from the sidewalk on uh, on West Olympia and you have and that's it's a uh, it's a full lot in from that uh, location from that spot and there's this clump of four or five uh, 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 palm trees royal palms that uh, that would break that visual uh, line anyway. So I know in the historic district we have screen cages that can be seen from the roadway. This will be less visible than, uh, than some and, uh, and not impactful to the historic uh, concerns that we have, appropriate concerns that we have. I have uh, done uh, historic preservation. Uh, I, I have uh, uh, not just for this client. Uh, I've gotten uh, properties on the National Register of Historic Places. I have uh, helped preserve buildings when, uh, when the county was uh, trying to, had condemned them and were trying to tear them down. Uh, I, uh, I, I have spoken at conferences concerning historic preservation and historic preservation ordinances. Uh, and it's my opinion that this meets the, our concerns concerning uh, historic uh, uh, improvements within the historic district, and it should be granted a certificate of appropriateness. Thank you. May I answer any questions? Yeah, I, and David Perry. Um, were the neighbors supplied proper notice of the, of the request for this variance? The, uh, the neighbors, there, there is a notice requirement. I don't know that they've, what they've received at this point. I did speak to the neighbor at that house that, uh, uh, that's adjoining. Uh, as I was taking pictures, they don't have any issue with, uh, with what's being proposed. I did speak 
uh, uh, briefly to the uh, people who are directly to the, uh, to the east. Uh, they didn't have any issues with what was going on, but I don't know what uh, notice they've actually received. Okay. Uh, I, Leah Pews for the record. Um, I'm going to be sending out public hearing notices, um, in, I believe at the end of this week, for the variance, so they will be notified, uh, the neighbors within 200 feet of the request, um, because it's going to Board of Zoning Appeals and to City Council. So that's, um, they will be notified ahead of time. And, and when would that hearing be with the City Council or the Board of Zoning Appeals? I, I'm, I'm sitting here wondering why we're listening to this. Um, um, it's gonna be at the end of April. Okay. Um, I can't, I don't know the exact date of the Board of Zoning Appeals, but um, I know I have to send out the I've, I've got that someplace. public yeah. hearings. Uh, let's, uh, if you would please address the chair and step across, oh, talk okay. to everybody. And, uh, keep some order with us. But uh, David, thank you. Uh, and thank you, sir, for your comments. Um, and I believe, judging from the fact that Mr. Austin has approached the uh, lectern, that he has something to say to us. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So the, uh, the Variance application process uh, for properties that are outside uh, any historic district or are not designated, listed on the Florida Master Site file as a historic property, is they go to uh, Board of Zoning Appeals uh, for recommendation and City Council for decision. The, um, if it is listed uh, as a historic property or within a historic district, a variance has to be has to go through the uh, certificate of appropriateness process. So you're advising both uh, city council and the board of zoning appeals vis-a-vis -vis the variance. So if the if the board found this to be not appropriate for uh, uh, for the architect uh, for historic preservation purposes, then that would be a, a mitigating factor in any decision that they may make uh, at those other two bodies. Um, same thing on the other side. If you were to approve it, that would also be a mitigating factor. So, you know that that's that's why it is here before you at this point is to inform. Uh, the rest of the process. And the position of the uh, staff is? So the, the position of the staff, unfortunately, and this one is a little bit muddled. So from a purely historic preservation point of view, as, uh, as the applicant's representative has stated, there is no negative impact uh, of the proposed pool cage and pool um, structures. Uh, on the other side, uh, from the standpoint of the variance itself, staff uh, does not believe that the, uh, that the proposed application meets the literal criteria uh, for granting a variance. So that's why they, we have recommended denial. Uh, but again, purely from a historic preservation perspective, you know, you say potato, I say potato. It, oh. it, <laughs> six of one half dozen the yeah. other. Mr. Chair, may I ask a question of yes, Mr. Austin? Mr. Chair, hang on for one more second. I guess my main concern would be setting a precedent. We've had a lot of concerns about uh, the historic district and the actions that we take, although for the individual may not be an issue or for the near neighbors or whatever, but the bigger issue was setting a precedent. And one of the precedents we might be setting here from the historic preservation perspective is that we're now telling people they don't have to do the 15 foot setback and that's okay. And I, that would be sort of my main concern because even if the cage itself doesn't have sort of any so historic value or cause any problems, it does start to lead to this issue of, are we now on this slippery slope of people saying, well, they've let it go for this one, so now we've got to let it go for that one, and we don't know what's going to be coming before us in the future. So although this particular application, the longer term question also is, what is the impact on the historic district if we start to say all of this sort of thing is okay? Yeah, and, and to address that um, in, my time here with the city uh, under the current code, which was adopted in 05, 
the variance applications that we've received within the historic district that have been reviewed by the board have predominantly been for people making improvements to structures with non-conforming setbacks. So existing historic structures, making improvements, uh, maintaining or expanding small areas that don't meet don't conform with the existing setback provisions in order to preserve the structure. And that's the intent of allowing historic preservation to be a, a, a consideration in the variance process where otherwise it would not be. Um, so this one is a little unusual for us. This is the first one that, that staff has seen where it is it, it, it has no impact either way. And Mr. Ross, Chairman. question, if I may. So actually, if I am understanding what is being said, we are actually to recommend or consider whether this actually uh, affects the historic mm -hmm. integrity of that property mm -hmm. in a negative way. Or positive way. Or positive. And, uh, with that understanding, I think what we're looking at is the historical aspects and uh -huh. not so much the technical, because there are two boards and there's board and uh, that are reviewing the technical aspects of it. Correct. Which, uh, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, if I, if I may. You may. The, uh, I just wanted to make uh, clear that when, just because staff says we recommend denial and they recommend denial on the variance for their technical reasons, that doesn't mean that they're correct. As a matter of fact, I was before the city council, last time I was before the city council was on a setback variance in Punterwood Isles. Staff recommended denial, the, uh, and both the, uh, the planning board and the, uh, the city council uh, approved it unanimously. And so, they don't always agree with staff's position on these things. I think that you should, my hope is that you will uh, assume that this variance would be granted at the end of it all. And the question is, if it's granted, will this structure negatively impact historic uh, issues? And the answer is no. You're not here to determine whether this variance is appropriate or not. You don't. I mean, that comes under sworn testimony, competent substantial evidence. That's nothing that you are being asked to, uh, to, uh, to participate in. You're being assumed that this variance is going to be granted and that what then is the effect upon, uh, upon this property from the historic perspective. I think that you're getting there very quickly and I just wanted to try to summarize that that's my position on it. And I think ultimately uh, the staff's position is that, is that take a look at it as if this is going to be approved and does that have a historic impact? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other comments? Any other questions from members of the board? I, my only comment is, is I concur with you. I mean, I, I don't really see where this impacts the historical nature and what we're supposed to do. I think this is more of a variance issue for planning in the city council and not within our purview, other than the fact that it doesn't impact, from my, my take, it doesn't impact the historical significance of the property. Okay, any other comments? Uh, that being the case, chair calls for a motion of approval or denial. Uh, so. Approval. So the approval would be to basically deny, or the city's want, is looking for the denial, so we're looking for an approval here, if that's correct. the correct terminology, correct? I would think so, yes. Okay. So we will approve what we are voting on, then would be approving the variance from a historical standpoint and the uh, technical standpoint. Oops, here comes Austin. Chair, if I may. Yes, uh, you may. So, so your motion should be either to approve or to deny the certificate of appropriateness. Right. You're not directly addressing the variance. That's Board of Zoning Appeals and City Council. Right. It's the certificate right. of appropriateness. Thank you for the okay. input. 
Okay, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the certificate of appropriateness. Any other comments? Do we have a second? Okay, call for a vote. All in favor of approval of the variance for appropriateness signify by saying aye. 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 Disapprove? Nay. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Okay. Brittany Metzler again. Yes. Mr. Moving Chair, on. if I may, for one minute, I think I'm supposed to actually justify my nay. Is that correct? I think we had a discussion about this last time from uh, mm -hmm. Sarah yeah. that if someone votes no, they have to say yeah. why. So we just want to be clear on that before we move on. My main concern is what I've mentioned before, which is to set a precedent in the historic district of basically uh, approving things that don't meet the setback requirements and how that might have an impact over time on the historic district. So that's the mm -hmm. basis for my nay. Thank you. Uh, I think I probably won't go there. It is a little unusual, I will point out, to if you vote against any motion that you now have to explain why you vote against it. Uh, that is not normal procedures, but it's what we have adopted, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I'll just pass that on. Editorial comment. I have heard that from other people that outside of the city, that the, they've just kind of, that's personal comments. They're just kind of shocked at that, but I can understand why too. So that being the case, the motion to approve the variance <coughs> passes here. Any other comments? Let's see, that brings us now to unfinished business. No? Don't we have inf We've got oh, some information only. Yeah, yeah, we have Mr. other Chair, things, yeah. that's true. Uh, so let's hit the unfinished business. And that's the information only aspect. Yes, information only CAs. This first CA 08-2023 for 308 Sullivan Street. Uh, the applicant proposed removing the existing shingle roof and replacing it with a metal roofing material. Staff has approved the CA because the proposed replacement complies with code and is in keeping with the character of the surrounding neighborhood. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. okay. No questions. This CA 11-2023 for 321 West Retta Esplanade. The applicant proposed to have the existing bitumen roof removed and replaced with like same material for the flat portion of the roof. Staff has approved the CA because the roof removal and replacement complies with code and is in keeping with the character of the surrounding neighborhood <coughs> and of course cannot be seen from the road. This is another mm -hmm. roof, CA 12-2023 for 2020 Durant Street. The applicant re proposed removing the existing asphalt shingle roof and replacing it with like same material. Staff has appro uh, approved the CA application because the roof replacement complies with code and is in keeping with the character of the surrounding neighborhood. Any questions? Hmm. Okay. And this last one is a little different. CA 13, 2023, 111 Chastain Street. It's a fence application. The applicant proposed to replace a section of the fence that was destroyed during Hurricane Ian and construct another portion of fence, a new fence at the end of his driveway. Not, they can't be seen from the road. These are both things that are gonna happen in the back of the house. So staff has approved the CA as the proposed wooden fence will have no impact on the property's historic character and complies with code. Thank you. All right, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other, well, general business, any comments? There's, and then any further staff comments? Oh. No, sorry. And any comments, further comments from members of the board? May I ask just one question, Mr. Chair? Mm -hmm. David, any news on the restoration no, of the? No, uh, it, Nancy, uh, 
Johnson was going to get out uh, minutes from our last meeting in, our, in, a, in a course of action, and I have not seen that. Um, Mitchell, have you, because it was supposed to be included in this month's uh, board minutes. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Again, Mitchell Austin, Urban Design. <clears throat> Staff has not received uh, anything from Team Punagorda regarding the meeting that was that was held uh, to this point, um, and and hasn't heard of scheduling a, a follow up meeting, which is something else that we were looking towards. So uh, we'll follow up with Team mm -hmm. Punagorda and see see what's happening on that end. Uh, on the city project end, uh, we. <clears throat> we were, uh, we went out to bid for a construction manager at risk to, to do the construction work on the proposed project um, that uh, we received only one uh, responsible bidder back uh, because of the state requirements regarding uh, the process. If you only receive one bid, we had to relist it again and again and extend the, the deadlines. Uh, those have expired, and we will be uh, doing the final selection uh, for that contractor, I believe, next week, uh, next Tuesday. Uh, so once that uh, uh, contractor is engaged, construction manager of at risk is engaged, we will be bringing forward that to city council. Uh, along with a proposal for a, a task one, which would be uh, pre-construction services. So cost estimates of this, the existing 60% construction plans and then again at 90%. And then of course there's a guaranteed maximum price for the actual construction. Uh, so I would imagine that once we get to the procurement part going to city council, we will have that broader discussion with them about what they do or don't want to do. Uh, but the one thing that City Council has uh, said over and over again they want from us is, uh, well, two things. One, they want to know how much this project's going to cost because we haven't really had any substantive thought put into that since the grant application because contractually the, the project architect isn't required to do it till we get to 90% plans and we don't have the construction manager at risk on board. So. Once we gauge the construction manager at risk, we would imagine that there would be a four to six week uh, timeline for them to produce that 60% plan cost estimate. So that's one piece. The second piece is city council has directed us to come up with some sort of game plan for the ultimate management of the structure. What is it going to be used for? How is it going to hopefully maintain itself in terms of just the ongoing routine maintenance costs of operating the structure? Uh, so that's, that's where we're at right now. I would imagine based on what I know right now that it's going to be May, June before we have the cost estimate piece for city council so that they understand what, what the project is projected to cost. Uh, as far as the other piece, um, we're, we're, as staff, we're leaning heavily on the, on the outside group um, being convened by Team Punagorda to really tell us what, what, what a realistic proposal for this would be. I know that uh, they were looking at, um, that that group was looking at uh, hearing from the folks that operate the borough's home in Fort Myers, because that would be a similar mm -hmm. sort of condition, uh, you know, event space, special things, photo ops, that sort of thing that generate revenue and make the building open to at least some portion of the public on a fairly regular basis. So. That, that's the path that they appear to be going down, which is a very good path from, from my perspective of, of having people in the building on some kind of regular basis because the, the reason that it is in the condition that it's in now is because the tenant that we had in place stopped using the building for a significant period of time, so nobody was going in and out of that building. So little problems, a water, leader, water heater leak, uh, an AC leak became 
mm -hmm. huge costly problems. Because mm -hmm. the building was unobserved. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you for the update. Any other member comments? I therefore, as chair, call the Historic Preservation Advisory Board of March 23rd, 2023, adjourned. And I'm going to remember to turn my cell phone back on. <laughs> why, have I, why haven't I got any calls? Yeah, why doesn't there? anybody love me anymore? It's been a very quiet day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. See well, you all later. Thank well, you. See you at four o'clock. Thank you all for coming too.